Hi everyone, in this video we are going to create a project to explain how to compare two objects and we're going to name this compare to project. Uh, for the purpose of this example we are going to create a very simple class which is our favorite rectangle class and all that it contains are instance variables width and height. We'll create one constructor and here width becomes math.max 0, w. So we're going to perform some validation just to make sure that width and height are not assigned invalid values. And we will also implement our two string function so that when the object is displayed, this function is called automatically, this method is called automatically. And what this returns is whatever the width is by whatever the height is. Let's add one more method, which is the di diagonal of this rectangle on which this method is called. So we don't have to pass the object as a parameter we're going to call this method on an object and what we return is math dot square root square of width plus square of height that's the pythagoras theorem talking we're going to create a client for rectangles we're going to call it rectangle client containing public static void main and we're going to create two objects here rectangle r equals new rectangle let's say two by three and another rectangle s which is four by one let's quickly change the definition of the two string and say area equals the area Oh, area function. Okay, so we have to add another method area which returns width times height. All right, we'll go back to rectangle client and we create these rectangles and we're going to display objects R and S. <clears throat> Now on this program, you can see in the console that we get two by three, area is six, four by one, area is four. So what we're going to do is we want to compare which one is bigger, whether it's R or it's S. It's for this purpose that we create the method compare to inside a function. So compare to is nearly a special method. Obviously, we're going to call compare to on a rectangle object, and we call that object the calling object. So here, what we already know is compare to will be called on a rectangle object. We call this the calling object and it's referred to by a very special keyword this inside the method in short we say that this is a reference copy of the calling object so if i call the method on object r r is my calling object and this will refer to the same instance that r refers to if i call it an s this will refer to the same instance that S refers to. But we are also going to pass another rectangle object. So whichever object we pass as parameter to compare to will be reference copied into other, which means other is a reference copy of the actual parameter all right so that's all you need to know in terms of compare to and what does compare to do 
let's say return uh, what what do we return we return one if calling object is more than parameter object we return minus one if calling object is less than parameter object and we return zero if calling object is equal to parameter object but how do we define uh, more than less than equal to so we have to specify the comparison criterion or comparison criteria in this case I'm going to use area so if the area of calling object which is copied into this is more than the area of other object then we return one so uh, what I'm going to do is because the areas are also integers I'm going to call them as a one you don't have to do that you can compare directly this dot area with other dot area but I'll make intermediate copies and I'll keep them in a one and a two and after that it's pretty smooth sailing once we know what's the calling object and parameter object once we copy their area all we have to do is compare the areas if a1 is more than a2 it means calling object has a bigger area we return one uh, it's guaranteed if we reach line number 47 that a1 is either less than or equal to a2 so we check is a1 less than a2 and return minus one if that's the case if we reach line number 51 it's guaranteed that a1 must be equal to a2 otherwise we wouldn't be here and we can return 0 unconditionally please note that if you put if you wrap return 0 around a1 equals a2 which we know for a fact is true your method will complain java will complain that the method must return a result of type int that's because all three return statements are conditional and that's why since it's guaranteed that a1 is equal to a2 at line number 52 you can return 0 directly we we'll go back to the uh, rectangle client and we'll say int result equals r dot compare to s here r is calling object and s is parameter object so you can as I said earlier the calling object is reference copied into this the parameter object s is referenced copied into other it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to name it other you can name it whatever you want let's open our lecture notes and take a look at conditions functions inside objects please do take a look at this example that I have provided here here I have R1 compared to R2 and therefore in the scope of R1 dot compared to R2 this is a reference copy of R1 because the calling object is R1 and other is a reference copy of R2 because the parameter object is R2 and that's your method definition uh, very quickly we're going to run this and what we are expecting is that if the area of the calling object which is r and its area 6 is more than a2 which is 4 it will return 1 so when I run this program and display result I'm expecting 1 oops not 1 directly result okay let's run this and you can see that the outcome is 1 on the other hand if I call the method on object s and par pass r as the parameter now s has become the calling object and r is the parameter and now we are expecting the parameter to be uh, the outcome to be minus one if i pass both s as calling object and parameter basically this and other refer to the same instance and our answer would be zero okay let's revert back to r dot compare to s place breakpoints in our function that is expected and I can guarantee that if you 
stay with me for the entire duration of debugging then things will become much much easier for you to understand so here i'm going to say this is the result and return result <clears throat> all right <clears throat> uh, let's not put breakpoints in area i'm going to put breakpoints in area a little bit later i'm going to debug our program and you can see in the variables that I have two objects of type rectangle R and S. R has an ID of 21, S has an ID of 22. When I call compare to, I'm calling it on object R and the parameter is S. In my rectangle class, as I said, the calling object is copied into this and the parameter object is copied into other. So what I'm expecting is this will have an ID of 21 and other will have an ID of 22 if what I say is right. So if I resume my execution from line number 11 in rectangle client, I will jump into the compare to method, but I didn't put uh, these debug points, but that's fine. You can see this has an ID of 21, other has an ID of 22. Let's stop the debugging and run it one more time. So debug. This time R has an ID of 22, S has an ID of 24. If I resume, you can see this has an ID of 22 and other has an ID of 24. So this is a reference copy of R, other is a reference copy of S. A1 is this dot area. Now this is three by two. So we are expecting A1 to be six and A2 is other dot area. So you're calling the method area on object other which is one by four. So the answer should be four, which is correct. Then it checks is six more than four. Yes, it is. And we enter the conditional block and it returns one, which is what we display. On the other hand, if I swap these around and change the calling object to S and debug my program once again, S has an ID of 23 and R has an ID of 21. So when I go into the area method, I'm expecting this to have an ID of 23, other to have an ID of 21. So that's exactly what's gonna happen. This has 23, other has 21. Then we are calling the method area on object this, which is one by four. So it's area should be four, A1 will be four and A2 will be other dot area so other is three by two its area would be six and a2 is six this time it will skip the first conditional block but it does go to the second conditional block and it returns negative one and result becomes negative one and that's our answer as I said earlier I didn't put breakpoints in the area method let's put breakpoints in the area method as well and debug our program once again. Uh, let's stop the debugging and remove or terminate it. Debug the program once again. Uh, okay, uh, I think I made some mistake. Let's see. Let's go here. Oh, it's because of this. Uh, because it, when, I, when I displayed uh, R and S, two string was called and two string was calling area. That's why I'm going there. So let's get rid of that. Uh, debug our program. Result is S dot compared to R. Note S has an ID of 23. R has an ID of 21. So in the compare to method, because S is the calling object, this has an ID of 23 and other has an ID of 21. And now this what I'm going to say is the key. Next, what we're doing is we are calling the method area on object this, which has an ID of 23. So when I jump into the area method, again, in the scope of area, uh, this reference is created. Now, that this reference is different to this reference from compared to anyways. So here, this is 23. So when I call this dot area, it jumps into area and 
the this reference in area will also have ID 23. So when I resume, you can see we are inside area and this has an ID of 23. Okay, result is four and it returns it to compare to. Then we call other dot area. Other has an ID of 21 and it's the calling object for area. And because it's the calling object for area, inside the method area, this will be a reference copy of other. So when I resume this, inside area, there'll be a this reference, but its ID will be 21. And there you go. This has an ID of 21. And its area is 6, we return, and everything else is the same. So that's an A to Z explanation of the compare to method. Uh, well, almost. Instead of comparison criteria, criterion, it can be comparison criteria. So area and diagonal. So basically, if areas are clearly different, return 1 or minus 1. But if they're the same, then check the diagonal. So here we start checking the diagonal. So we say double D1 equals this dot diagonal. Double D2 is other dot diagonal. And the same thing again. By the way, there are easier way to do this, but obviously in COM 1010, we expect students to do everything from scratch. For better or for worse, we return minus one, one and zero unconditionally. We're going to change our rectangle client a little bit and we're going to name, uh, have this as three by four and five by one. So here clearly uh, R has a bigger area. So it will return one. Let's stop debugging and run it in Java perspective. Outcome is one. That's good. If I call it on S by passing R, S clearly has a smaller radio area, so we will turn minus one. But if S has the same area, it's going to go and check the diagonal. So if I say R dot compare to S, it will jump into R dot compare to. This is a reference copy of R. Other is a reference copy of S. It's not even is not more than A2. A1 is not less than A2. Yes, it is equal to A2. So they'll check the diagonals. The diagonal 3 by 4 and the diagonal of 6 by 2, it will compare. And those won't be equal and will return 1 or minus 1. Now, which one has a bigger diagonal? Let's see. 3 by 4. So 3 square plus 4 square is 9 plus 16, 25. While 6 square plus 2 square is 36 plus 4, 40. So S has a bigger diagonal. So S is bigger. So R dot compared to S returns minus 1. Let's run this and we get minus one. If we compare S compared to R, we'll get plus one. And if S represents a rectangle of four by three, then the diagonals are also of the same length. In this case, R compared to S or S compared to R will return zero because the diagonals areas are the same and diagonals are the same. Uh, point being that compare to can have any number of levels of comparison criteria. So we call here area is the primary comparison criteria. Diagonal is the secondary comparison criteria. So there you go. That is compared to. Uh, if you follow the instructions, if you follow the specifications, if you understand reference copies clearly, basically, if you're diligent, it's not a problem at all. Thank you very much and hope you have a good day. Take care.